Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the talk. Uh, in this session, I'd like to uh, introduce you uh, an open source performance task automation solution. Uh, it's called Taurus. When it comes to performance testing, um, as we know, JMeter is great uh, and popular, but somehow it's not perfect. Like automation and integration with other system is a pain and the tool itself comes with a steep learning curve. Taurus is an open source test automation tool that extends an abstract of JMeter and helps to overcome those challenges. Taurus provides a simple way to create a run and analyze performance tests. As we also know, the load testing pr process is not just limited to developing and running a tool a, a load test. Uh, some key load testing activities include uh, like uh, say uh, load test scenario definition design, uh, load test scenario uh, parameterization and execution, uh, result analysis, uh, integration of all of these processes into software development life cycle, and of course automation of all of those above. All right. Well, JMeter has many advantages. Some of the limitations will potentially never be truly fixed, like the automation and integration piece that I just mentioned. Uh, and other limita limitations, like um, not so obvious approaches to set low test scenario details, like ramp up and ramp down time to hold the loads and concurrencies. Um, there are many popular open source solutions out there which include alternatives. Um, however, um, each having its own pros and cons and each tool needs to be configured differently and the output formats of the load test result differs as well. That's the big challenge and that's the background I was uh, testing towards. Again, it's a free open source automation framework, which uh, is generally an abstraction over all those popular uh, um, performance testing uh, automation solutions like uh, JMeter, uh, Catlan, Selenium, you just name it. All right. Here, I listed out some key uh, benefits by using Taurus. Uh, for example, um, Firstly, uh, Taurus is extremely simple to set up and upgrade. Uh, it's, it's a command line tool that is quite easy to run from various uh, CI tools like Jenkins, uh, GitLab CI, and is quite easily uh, readable, um, version control friendly, and uh, uh, is using unified DSL, which is a uh, domain a specific language to uh, you know, uh, define uh, low test scenarios and its ability to execute existing JMeter or Grainer or Kathleen or Selenium, uh, whatever uh, tests and the ability to create new tests from scratch using the DSL. And also the ability to merge multiple existing test scripts or DSL driven tests into a single big scenario. <clears throat> What's more, it also provide. Um, it, it also has like real time reporting uh, capabilities by uh, integrate with uh, Blaze Meter reporting services. All right. Uh, now, uh, how do we run Taurus? Um, there uh, again, th uh, there is a command line uh, tool called BZT, which is Blaze Meter Taurus. Uh, it can be invoked like the syntax below uh, in the slide right here. Okay, and firstly, uh, you just need to uh, install it. Um, here, uh, all you need to do just Google Taurus, and here is the official uh, website, and click installation and list out all different options uh, of installing Taurus on your on your laptop. If you're using Mac, for example, uh, as I do here, just um, using uh, homebrew, uh, you should brew install BZT. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, BZT will be installed and you're good to go. All right. And also back to slide, um, 
you are um, you are able to override any configurations from the script using the uh, dash o uh, switch uh, in the in the in the execution command. Uh, for example, uh, you needed to use a uh, different JMeter version for different executions um, by uh, simply uh, passing the pass to it using the uh, hyphen o argument. All right. Another important thing uh, while you're running Taurus is to understand the concepts of an artifact directory. Artifact directory primarily collects all of the files that are used within the execution, configuration, logs, generate scripts, and everything else. It is generated automatically when you execute your scripts. Uh, here I listed out some um, important artifacts like uh, bzt.log which apparently is the uh, Taurus log this is the uh, the best place when you need to troubleshoot uh, with your Taurus uh, 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 command or scripts um, and that's the first place you you, you want to uh, take a look all right and merge.yaml and merge.json which are pretty much the same thing but in different formats uh, uh, it's a semi-final Taurus config file that contains a uh, user-provided configuration without any defaults or, or overrides in it. And you also have the effective.yaml and effective.json, which actually shows you uh, the configuration after applying the default rules and any other uh, modifications you may have performed during execution. All right, and this is exactly how Taurus deals with its configuration instructions and how does YAML map to JSON. And JMeter is the default executed type used by Taurus if not is specialized. If there is no JMeter installed at the uh, configuration path by default or configured, uh, Taurus will attempt to install the latest version of JMeter and plugins into the location defined. By default, Taurus looks for JMeter inside the um, bzt slash uh, JMeter uh, hyphen Taurus uh, slash bin directory. Um, uh, it will download and install if it fails to find it. Again, uh, you can though uh, change the, this default location of the JMeter path um, by uh, the dash o uh, argument, or you can define in the JMeter uh, defamation file, configuration file. Cool. Um, all right, uh, demo time. Uh, this demo, I'm gonna use uh, GitLab CI. I created in my uh, previous session for the car API Spring Boot application and add another uh, post-deployment state uh, to include load testing using Taurus. All right, cool. Uh, by the way, if you haven't watched that previous uh, session for GitLab CI, uh, like I mentioned, uh, here I attached the, um, the uh, link. F uh, feel free to uh, jump over there and take a look. Then you know what, ma what I'm talking about. All right, cool. Um, Again, before I move to the um, demo, remember to thumb up my video if you think it helps one way or, one way or another and uh, subscribe my channel. And most important, uh, important uh, um, is to uh, leave your comments if you have any questions. All right, cool. All right, uh, I had two uh, configuration.yaml file uh, in place already uh, here, pass, fail.yaml and execution.yaml. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna start with something really simple. Uh, I just need to issue BZT. Uh, as you remember, uh, it's uh, blaze meter Taurus, that's the ally command, command. And I'm gonna include uh, both of these config file, uh, execution.yaml and passfail.yaml, all right? So once I hit enter, what I expect is uh, Taurus uh, uh, should have automatically take care um, of these two config file by merging uh, these two files into one single task plan before the actual uh, execution happens. 
All right, let's see how it goes. Hit enter. All right, it's preparing and it kick off the uh, test case and boom, it's done. Uh, because uh, I only set one concurrent uh, user uh, for these tests in Gmeter, so it's supposed to be this fast. And, and as you can see, the these uh, were two API testing I configured in the in Gmeter side. One is a, a add car, the other is uh, which is a post method and, and get all cars, which is a get method and all shows okay, status shows okay. All right, so we're good. Um, so uh, let's uh, jump into the configuration uh, and to see uh, what I've done uh, in each of the files. Let's start with passfail.yaml. So basically in the passfail.yaml, I was using a predefined uh, module called passfail where uh, you can define the passfail criteria like the one uh, here. I define a really simple one. Uh, you know, because the, the demo API is extremely simple and fast, so I had to um, uh, set something like uh, 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 if the average response time is longer than like 0 0.001 millisecond for 0 0.01 millisecond, just want to, I want to set an example to, to, sh to uh, uh, show as a failure on the uh, CI side so it, it, can, it, it proves it works, right? So <clears throat> basically it means if the average response time of all those uh, API testing in the, in the uh, JMeter uh, script, if any of them, the response time is more than uh, 0 0.001 millisecond for, for 0 0.01 milliseconds, it's gonna uh, stop these tests and mark it as a failure. All right, so uh, straightforward, right? So on the other hand, uh, in these execution that YAML, uh, because I had a, already had a, a, a JMeter uh, script in place, I just wanted to run that existing script, right? So I just needed to name a scenario uh, right here. Uh, I call it uh, uh, with script. And in, in, in these scenarios, in these with script scenario, I just point the, uh, the JMeter script, the, the JMX file. Uh, so it, it, it can f uh, uh, f find, uh, identify the, uh, that um, uh, JMeter script, right? <clears throat> Um, that's, uh, that's it. And then the reporting module, uh, this is an important one. So, uh, for reporting, Taurus, um, provides four, uh, four reporter, uh, modules out of box. Um, uh, the uh, first one is console, which comes as default. It sh just shows, uh, live test stats, uh, in your terminal, uh, just like what you see here, right? So I didn't configure um, in my uh, configuration, but uh, as I said, it's, it, it comes as default. It will show uh, whatever results in the console. So you, you will see directly uh, from your console about the, the test you just ran, all right? The next one is called, uh, f uh, the, uh, the reporter module uh, is called final hyphen stats, uh, which also comes as default. So basically, it just provides a post-test summary stat in, the, in your log. Um, then, uh, then the third one uh, is BlazeMeter, uh, which apparently provides interactive online test reports on uh, BlazeMeter, right? And the la last but not least um, uh, is called um, um, JUnit uh, XML. Uh, that generates test stats in uh, JUnit compatible formats. So if you watch my previous session for uh, GitLab CI, and as you remember, GitLab CI has the capability to recognize JUnit format reports, right? So this is the module I wanted to test out so that we can see the result on GitLab CI directly. Uh, if you want to see the, uh, the four reporters, um, uh, information that our uh, definition, uh, you can go to again, you can go to the uh, Taurus official documentation. And here we go uh, in the uh, reporting section uh, under user menu. Uh, you can see uh, here that's basically what I ex explained. Taurus provide the following reporter modules. Here we go. And we're going to test 
uh, uh, console final underscore stats and j unit hyphen x map, right? So back to um, IntelliJ my uh, ID. So here, basically, I'm using these j unit hyphen the x map module, and I just uh, point to the to the uh, point the location of the um, j unit uh, test uh, test file to here will be generated under this location and data source data source will be uh, pass fail all right so here uh, what data source as you can see here jmeter uh, xml reporter this remote reporter provides test result in JUnit XML formats uh, parsable by Jenkins uh, JUnit plugin and this reporter has two options, file name and uh, data source. Uh, file name um, basically is the location where the, um, the uh, JUnit uh, uh, XML file uh, will be uh, generated. And data source, uh, <clears throat> if pass fail used as source data here, data source, uh, report will contain pass fail criteria information. Basically, that's what uh, we just defined in the pass fail um, the YAML file right here. All right, that's uh, pretty much it. So next, what we can do, we're gonna like m uh, like add another. Um, uh, we, we're gonna jump to the that GitLab uh, uh, Git, GitLab uh, hyphen CI the YAML. So basically, what we're gonna do, we're gonna integrate these uh, low test to our existing uh, CI/CD pipeline on GitLab CI, as I mentioned earlier in our demo, right? So uh, if you uh, remember, we already had a, uh, a like a, like one, two, three, four, five, five stages um, production pipeline uh, in our is uh, in our previous session. We already built that, right? So basically, what I'm gonna do here, I just need to do a little change by adding these load test performance load test uh, to the post deploy stage right so let's go right here and you can see i add a new job called load testing and this job belongs to post deploy stage and here we're going to use um, the image that contains uh, blaze music blaze meter torus uh, basically that's the ally we uh, just, uh, we installed earlier, I uh, remember that uh, BZT CLI command. So we're gonna need this um, image uh, because it contains that CLI um, uh, in it. All right, and script we're gonna run. This is the exact uh, uh, script we issued uh, manually just now. And we wanted to um, to review the result that, that uh, JUnit uh, uh, XML file, right? That's why I create an artifact and I'm gonna put that uh, JUnit result uh, XML file to this location and it's gonna report as JUnit. So once uh, it's configured, once the pipeline is, are, is running, we should be able to see that the results um, uh, uh, in the in the G G GitLab CI uh, directly, all right? Cool. Let's com uh, comment out and uh, push it uh, this change to uh, to GitLab and let's see uh, how it goes. Cool. All right. The uh, pipeline build was complete successfully. As you can see, um, there was a new job um, being added uh, within post deploy, uh, which was a uh, load testing. Right. So if we go inside of this uh, job, uh, we can see uh, <clears throat> the uh, the uh, test result uh, here uh, from console. That's because, as you remember, the reporter module, the console report module, comes as default. So no, even we did not configure uh, explicitly on our config file, it's still there. All right, and. Also, we configured uh, the uh, JUnit XML report. Uh, by the way, a little correction here. I did a little bit change uh, in the uh, pass fail the YAML file. I just uh, uh, update the criteria to something else because, uh, you know, as I said, so these 
uh, sample uh, uh, API was too too easy and it's it, it runs too fast. It's also it's hard to catch uh, with the um, uh, average response time criteria. So I just changed it to a, um, a monitoring based criteria. So if the, um, the, the, the CPU, the, where the test being, uh, the test is being hosted, uh, is um, CPU usage is more than 70% for five seconds. I'm going to mark it as a failure. Uh, all right. So, uh, this is uh, basically uh, again you can refer to the uh, documentation right here so monitoring based failure so you can directly call a class bzt module monitoring monitoring criteria to set this up all right all right and uh, go back to our pipeline and and as you remember um gitlab ci uh has the uh, is able to recognize the JMeter formats, right? That's pretty much what we got here. If we click test, as you can see, we got results for load testing right here. And if we click that, and it worked. As uh, here is the detail of the criteria. All right, that's um, pretty much it. Uh, but uh, it's. Uh, you can actually this is not the uh the end of these pipeline actually uh what you can do you can continue improve the pipeline going forward um uh, you can continue to uh, improve the pipeline uh a good use case that we could accomplish here uh uh is uh for example we could pass a low test yaml file to the bzt which could be configured with a higher concurrency for load testing and at the same time we could also go go ahead and append this with a functional testing yaml which will be configured with with a uh, fewer concurrent users and may uh, um, and may use a selenium script if your uh, testing team is comf comfortable with Selenium instead of JMeter, because as I said at the beginning, JMeter requires it has a um, steep learning curve, right? So it's more, um, I guess, it's more efficient if your your testing team has been using Selen Selenium. So why not just uh, have them keep what they're doing? And these Terra's tool help us to to um, uh, deal with the the, the script. All right, and then uh, we can integrate them all into our pipeline so that we can make sure our low test scenarios work before we kick off the real high concurrency test. That's may make our, uh, I, I, get, I think that's make our pipeline uh, even more mature. All right, uh, all right, that's pretty much I want to share uh, for uh, this session. Um, Going forward, uh, please leave comments if we want to see more uh, demos for uh, these Taurus tools. So based on the feedback, I can um, have another uh, session about it. And um, all right, I think uh, let's call it a day. And uh, thanks, uh, thanks for watching again, and I'll see you next week. All right, thank you for watching my video. If you think this video is helpful, you're more than welcome to leave any comments. Remember, sum up, subscribe my video, and also hit the notification bell. See you next time.